It's my pleasure today to uh, interview Professor Bert Forscher from the Medical College of Wisconsin in the APS Living History series. Uh, Bert is a professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin in the Department of Physiology. He's a Wisconsin native um, and has, in essence, spent his whole career in Wisconsin. It's a real pleasure for me because Bert and I uh, got together in Madison very early on in the game. Bert was a student. I was a uh, faculty member, beginning faculty member at the time. So um, he was really my first graduate student, and we've had a long personal and scientific history together. So it's a real pleasure. Bert, welcome. Thank you, Jerry. Um, mm -hmm. Bert, give me some of your family background. I know you were born and raised in uh, northwestern Wisconsin. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up on a, on a good-sized farm. Um, uh, my parents um, <laughs> were both devout Catholics, as were all the relatives, of course, and, and the neighborhood. So not surprisingly, uh, there were 11 children in the family. <laughs> wow. uh, six boys and five girls. Uh, and I was the oldest son, um, had, an, had an older sister. So it was, um, it was a big family. Um, my dad was um, a, a really excellent farmer. Uh, he was uh, a, ahead of his time. He was always one of the, the innovators uh, in, the, uh, in the neighborhood in terms of, of farming practices to you know, um, prevent uh, erosion, uh, proper rotation of cro crops. And, um, and, <clears throat> um, and he was, most of the farmers back then, they were farmers. They weren't businessmen. Mm -hmm. But he had a, a, a businessman knack. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the farm was, was doing very well. Uh, and and uh, it was a, a, a very rich soil, so the crops were good. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, he got a, a stomach cancer when he was 46 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, at that time, I was, uh, I think, 11 years old. Um, and anyway, they operated and they had to remove two-thirds of his stomach. And so he was laid up um, for um, you know, several months um, and he got a hired man um, and, um, uh, to help work the farm. Mm -hmm. But the hired man <laughs> left a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so after a couple of months, my dad fired him and, and so uh, by then, he had recovered some already, and then with myself and my next two brothers, you know, we were able to um, work the farm. Uh, my mother was, you know, she was the first one in the barn in the morning to milk the cows, <laughs> wow. uh, but in terms of farm work and things like that, uh, she didn't do any of that, and she wasn't involved in the business aspect that either. He totally uh, did that. For the next couple of years, he... Uh, uh, he was doing quite well, except he had to eat. <laughs> Rather than three meals a day, he had to eat four or five because his stomach mm -hmm. was so so small. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, things moved you know fairly fairly well. Um, and then the cancer mm -hmm. returned, um, and and uh, he lived um, a total of three years after the um, first um, operation. Um, and so he died. Uh, um, when um, I was in eighth grade, mm -hmm. I was I was 14 years old, and um, you know. So you were head of the household on a I, farm uh, with yeah, 11 I, kids, it, a, yeah. a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, uh, you know, I was trained well. You know, mm -hmm. I and I was involved in things all the time. Mm -hmm. um, he and I talked a lot. Um, um, uh, he. Um, um, so I knew, I, knew, I knew the farming aspect of it, and I knew the business as, ex, aspect of it. And my, my next two brothers were also um, very good. Um, and so um, uh, there were some difficult times. At the, pro the other problem was that right at that time, um, farm products took a nosedive. Hmm. Uh, pigs went from 20 cents a pound down to 10 cents a pound. I mean, just drop at 50%. And you were mainly livestock, were you? We were all livestock, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, pigs, um, uh, uh, 
milking cows and, and chickens. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had the gamut. Uh, so the, the fall in prices, uh, you know, <laughs> made it tough, but uh, we, uh, we um, uh, you know, um, hung in there. Uh, we made mistakes, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we also um, recovered well. And um, we were, we were um, not only had, a, uh, the three of us had a great work ethic, but uh, we also had higher energy. You know, <laughs> we, um, uh, you know, um, could s sustain in order to uh, do the work. And actually, it turns out, to augment the income, um, there were two neighboring farms that, that were too small that they weren't making it uh, just by farming. So uh, they, uh, the husband went and got an extra job, and, but he couldn't put in his crops. So me and my two brothers, we would put in their <laughs> crops. And of course, we would get paid, but it would never come to us. It would come to <laughs> you will uh, <clears throat> to the central funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so because um, that allowed us then to meet our uh, expenses, but it also allowed us to buy additional equipment. Yeah. Um, and um, mm -hmm. so I, we uh, needed an elevator to help uh, uh, when we bailed hay to get the bales up in the barn. And we wanted a bigger tractor, so we bought a, mm -hmm. by the time I was a senior in high school, we, we bought a big tractor. Um, so, you know, in the, it was a period, you know, when, um, when dad was suffering that, you know, things were rough. I mean, yeah. that, was, that was tough. Um, and then there were times after he died that, um, you know, there wasn't, didn't appear to be enough money. But, um, you know, I, we had a happy, I had a happy mm -hmm. childhood. I mean, it was, it was a, a large part due to the example that he set, and then when he left, my mother was just mm -hmm. absolutely oh, tremendous. I didn't meet her once, quite yeah. a lady. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, the bottom line was, <clears throat> uh, when I had a, a very happy and fulfilling uh, a childhood. So, by your senior year in high school, you had to decide whether you were going to be a farmer or do something else, <laughs> right? And so, what was your next step? Well, well. Um, I always had done well in grade school. My dad was alive in, in school. Um, and my next brother uh, hadn't done well in school. So the thought was that, that I would go on to college. <clears throat> Actually, they wanted me to become a priest. <laughs> we had uh, one of my mother's sisters was a nun, and, and she was also trying to encourage me. But I, that wasn't a, a serious thought in my mind. But they, they, uh, they talked even before my dad died that, that you know, I should go to college and my next brother then okay. could take over the farm. Uh, but after my dad died, um, my thoughts of going to college um, sort, of, um, sort of left me until the senior year in high school. And in the fall of 1957, I was a senior in high school when Sputnik went up. Mm -hmm. and and then the, um, there was a big deal about our schools right. weren't good enough. We weren't training enough engineers. We need to get, we need to get uh, more our students going to college. And so, so that got in the back of my mind again, the thought of, of going to college. But uh, again, I, I, uh, I had not thought that much about it, but uh, Graduation hit, and all of a sudden hit me. I got to make up my mind. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Do I want to farm? Do I want to take over? Or do I want to try and go to college? Is it possible for me to go to college? And so for a, a couple of weeks, I was miserable. And then one day, the superintendent of school drove into the yard and he said, Bert, I have a, a tuition scholarship. Do you want wow. it? Do you want it to go to UW-Eau Claire? And I said, wow, yeah, I would. But I said, I, I, I don't know. They, they would only pay for the tuition. I got room and board. And he said, well, he said, I talked to the guy, the manager of the local creamery, and he could use an extra person on the graveyard <laughs> shift, <laughs> 11 to 7. So, so I started on a graveyard oh. shift, and that, that way I could, you know, help out on the farm also. Did so, you do that all through your undergraduate? 
Uh, no, I only yeah. did it. Uh, I did it during the summer, uh, the first two years, and okay. I worked uh, the graveyard shift. So, so then that way I was able to go to college. Um, for the first two years, I came home every weekend to <laughs> help my brothers uh, get uh, to catch up because we would have a lot of extra cleaning to do and, and harvesting or planting. Um, but then um, when um, uh, uh, in two years uh, after I finished my sophomore year, my next brother, he had graduated from high school, just graduated from high school, and he took over the farm. And so, oh, okay. so um, it turned out he, he was not a very good student, but boy, he's, he's an outstanding farmer. farmer. <laughs> that was the right plan. He still they, is, they, right? He, yeah, he's, they, that was the right plan for me to go to college and okay. him to take over the farm because he has done just a masterful um, job of it. So uh, again, that, that worked out well. I, um, I, when, I, when I got into college, um, I, I had been in high school, I was interested in, in history, in social studies, and I was also um, an athlete. Uh, so I decided to um, get a major in history and um, and mm. then get mm. a, a and well, clearly only had a minor in physical education and get a minor in physical mm. education um, and then I was going to go teach. Um, I enjoyed college tremendously. Um, I, 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 I think um, you know I, I, I enjoy learning and it's, that's mm. <laughs> always been true. Um, uh, so I got um, I got a, a history major, a physical education minor, but I, I, I thought I, I, what I really wanted to do was teach and coach for a number of years and then become a high school superintendent. Mm. Um, and, um, and I knew I needed a master's degree for that. Oh. So I decided I, I wanted to go directly from <laughs> undergraduate to um, um, graduate school and get um, either a master's in history or, ma uh, or finish the major in physical education and get, uh, and, and get a master's in, in that. But my application got lost. And, <laughs> and so I began to wonder, boy, uh, you know, I better get a job. So I interviewed for a high school teaching position and I was hired. Uh -huh. And I signed the contract, and next next week later, <laughs> I was admitted. To yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, I I taught that year then, um, and and that was a, a very very positive uh, experience. But you didn't continue with that. Yeah. No, I didn't, um, uh, because um, what happened that year, um, <laughs> I taught uh, high school history. And I taught all the physical education, boys and girls, in this small school. And I, I enjoyed both, um, but I, uh, I, I, um, uh, I felt inadequate in a lot of ways in physical education that I, I didn't know enough uh, about how the human body worked. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I decided uh, after that year that I would, um, I would definitely go to mm -hmm. um, uh, into uh, physical education. Uh, the year was, I mean, I had a great time. I really enjoyed it. I thought I made the right decision that, you know, I get the master's and then go back to coaching and, and teaching mm -hmm. and eventually um, become a high school superintendent. So that was my goal. But again, it took a different turn for then you, Then it right? took a different turn, yeah. How'd that happen? <laughs> you know, part of this, Jerry, is gonna become as much you as it is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess so. <laughs> but initially, uh, so I got to Madison, mm -hmm. and um, um, I was assigned an advisor in physical education. It was Larry Rarick. Mm -hmm. So I uh, had to, had to uh, do a, a thesis, a master's thesis. Mm -hmm. And so I went and talked to Rarick, and, and he said, well, do you want to do just some library research? Or do you want to do an experiment? And I said, I want to do an experiment. Okay. So he said, great. He said, I would like you to do a study to look to see if there's a correlation between speed of movement and strength. Okay. <laughs> so so I, he, he said, well, I have this experiment. Uh, 
and, and I said, okay, well, you know, what will it be? Well, he said, <coughs> what I'd like to have you do is test some subjects and test their arm strength to pull this way and then also test how fast they can move the arm across mm -hmm. like that, okay? I said, oh, that's good. And he says, I got some money to buy the um, supplies that you need, and, but you'll have to come up with a system to do it. Well, I was a house fellow in the dorms, uh -huh. and that's how I paid for going to school. Mm -hmm. I, I got uh, room board and tuition, so that was, that was good. So, well, there were two senior engineering students <laughs> in, in the group of 68 on my floor. And I told them about this. They built the oh, equipment. Good. I got, got the equipment <laughs> and they built the device. And, um, uh, and it turned out to be really a good study, but I took it one step further. Um, uh, you know, I showed him the results and he said, that's great. But he said, you know, I, and I had used guys from the dorm as my subjects and uh, he said, would you mind seeing if you can get some kids to do it? Well, I was, I was teaching physical education at uh, one of the um, parochial schools. Hmm. And so I went to the nuns and asked them, well, could I take some students, have some students come and do the same hmm. thing? And um, uh, um, she said, sure. Um, she really liked me. <laughs> hmm. and, and so, I would go to the school and I'd take two or three kids at a time, bring them over to the stadium. I had a, mm -hmm. had a room in the stadium uh, where I had this set up and we would do it and then I'd go back. Mm -hmm. And so I did um, 10 or 12 um, students and it w worked out uh, very well. And so uh, Dr. Eric was, was very um, impressed by that. And then, and then I, I, I don't know if you remember this, but, um, in the spring of 1964, which would have been a year after you started and mm -hmm. a year after I started there, uh, the Defense Department was giving out uh, fellowships uh, because, uh, because they, they felt that uh, uh, their American students weren't healthy enough. So they wanted, they wanted training in, mm -hmm. um, in exercise mm -hmm. physiology. And so, um, Rurik really liked my, <laughs> my data. So the, we, we, Madison, uh, UW got four of those scholarships and he mm. asked me if I wanted one. Mm. I, I jumped at it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it, because it was $2,000 tax free. And then I was gonna move up, if I stayed, I was gonna move up to be a head house fellow where I got room board and tuition plus $100 a month plus free food wherever I wanted to eat on campus. And I, I thought about, man alive, I'm making more money doing this than <laughs> teaching. Jesus, cool. So it was a no-brainer <laughs> that, uh, that I accepted that. Uh, but Larry, Dr. Rary said that, you know, you need to beef up uh, uh, your, in the sciences. So that's why I started that summer and the next year and the next summer uh, I took, um, a lot of uh, um, undergraduate biology and mm -hmm. chemistry and physics courses to uh, to mm -hmm. uh, 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 get you know develop a background uh, mm -hmm. in that, um, and then uh, the th the third year um, I uh, I took gross anatomy, mm -hmm. I took the medical neuroanatomy and uh, um, medical physiology, mm -hmm. and I don't know what else, but um, so then. After three years there uh, is when um, I had um, finished a master's and done the coursework for the PhD and I was ready to start research. Mm -hmm. And of course you and I had become friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a subject for your, <laughs> for your, yes, you were. I was yeah. a control subject. And if you remember, I got all your control subjects, students you in did. the dorm. <laughs> you did it from the dorm, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, um, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, you know, we had become good friends, and, and uh, <laughs> you asked me if I wanted to work with you, mm -hmm. and uh, I jumped at the idea, and that, that's how it got started. Okay, that's <laughs> what it got going, yeah. And so, um, I recall your project, your PhD project, was on uh, respiratory 
acclimatization to hypoxia. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was quite an experience, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 What were your thoughts about yeah. that? <laughs> well, you know what the in, the initial the initial plan was uh, the uh, the specific aims were uh, will training <laughs> at a high altitude will uh, yeah. th there be an increase in VO two? You know, because this was a big question at that time because the Olympics were coming up mm. in '68. Yeah. You know, and so. Do you train at sea level or do you train at altitude? <clears throat> and so one, that was one of the questions. Um, and, and then the second question was, and you and I had, had uh, you know, uh, <laughs> talked about this many times, will training at high altitude uh, result in a decrease in sensitivity mm -hmm. to CO2 and O2? Because we had read that athletes have a depressed response right. to a uh, chemoreceptor. <laughs> and so that was, that yeah. was the the objective when we when we left, uh, for for me anyway. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, it was the the, whole, the project as a whole that you had set up um, uh, was you know way beyond that. But but that is what my oh, focus was. Oh, it was a big part on. of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that all changed when we when, well. I mean, we 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 did that, but we we expanded it so much when we got. Right. We were a little naive we in were some naive, parts there yeah. too, weren't we? Yeah. We, our learning curve was steep. <laughs> yeah, well, it had to be. <laughs> but right? we, yeah, but we learned, yeah. <laughs> and we yeah. adapted very well. Yeah, so. yeah. So that was quite an experience. And then um, you got married, mm -hmm. right, to your wife Helen, mm -hmm. uh, who was a um, private school girl from, well, not raised in the east, but she went to school in, in the east. So that was quite a uh, an interesting combination there. Yeah, and yeah. then um, you chose to go to uh, Denmark for a postdoc, mm -hmm. and you your mentor there was the famous Erling Asmussen, one of the three Danish musketeers. Mm -hmm. Tell tell us about him and how you your relationship with Dr. Asmussen and how that went. Must have been quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, first of all, the the reason I went to um, I chose his lab was because you know you and I had read all oh. of his stuff and we were tremendously impressed mm -hmm. um, impressed by uh, his work uh, and, and if you remember we actually did uh, repeated a lot of his work mm -hmm. just to make sure Learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to satisfy ourselves and every time uh, you know we, it, it would what we would find in our pilot studies were exactly what he had found. Mm -hmm. um, um, but the other thing is, if you remember, uh, our good friend, and I say our because he was your good friend also, Tor Wrighton, mm -hmm. and and he was from Norway. He was a medical student that worked in in with you some mm -hmm. um, in uh, uh, diffusing capacity mm -hmm. of, of altitude. So he was part of uh, another part of the reason. Uh, that I went there, but I mean, it was such a no-brainer to go there. Bob Grover offered me a, a postdoctoral fellowship. I'd forgotten. That. Yeah, which you know, couldn't have gone wrong too. either. Yeah, yeah. You know, to go to Colorado um, w with him, and he's such a wonderful gentleman. But I never regret that I I, I went there. Um, uh, it, it was um, a, a different atmosphere than what you <laughs> had in your lab. Uh, 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 there was um, <clears throat> uh, a, a lot less energy than uh -huh. uh, than uh, what I was accustomed to. I mean, there, the, the 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 idea uh, was, um, you know, um, go at it slowly, but go at it steadily huh. and do it well. Mm -hmm. And and that's what that what was uh, emphasized. So there would be one experiment every day. Um, and and it wouldn't start till nine o'clock in the morning, right. but, <laughs> which was totally different than what you yeah. and I were accustomed to. Do the experiment in the morning, uh, then uh, every day have lunch with Asmussen mm -hmm. and Nielsen, and then after lunch have coffee with Asmussen and Nielsen. And of course, there were others too, um, and work for a couple of hours, two and a half hours in the afternoon, then have, have coffee. Yeah. <laughs> And then maybe work another hour, 
But they and, still and got things done. Still got done things well. done. That's right. Yeah. I'd yeah. forgotten Nielsen was there too at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, Marius was what there a too. combination. Hovi Christensen by that time was in Stockholm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the two of them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. and I didn't get to know uh, Christensen that well, um, but um, uh, Asmussen and Nielsen uh, were, you know, such gentlemen. I mean, they, they were they were they were just terrific and mm -hmm. asked me in some particularly I mean he he was a, a renaissance person I mean he was an expert and so I mean he could talk art with Helen you know yeah 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 <laughs> uh, and and he uh, uh, and he took us in his home um, you know so um, you know oh, what his, a great experience yeah, yeah you know his daughter Bodil yes uh, um, uh, got there she was in the lab also uh, so uh, no, we would go out to their summer home, and, and so uh, he treated me like a father. That's great. Also, and yeah. you had your first uh, child there, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. First a daughter. Yeah. yeah. That must have been quite an experience, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we had we had decided that we want, wanted the first child um, about a year after we were married. No. Yeah. Something like that. But but anyway. <laughs> uh, we, we wanted it as soon as we got back. And the original plan was only to be in Copenhagen for a year. But things were going so well that, uh, in Copenhagen that we extended it for six months. But, the, but by the time we decided to do that, Helen was pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's why the child was born then uh, in Copenhagen. And, and we were staying in the Collegium. Um, we had uh, um, uh, um, one, two, two rooms. Uh, we were the only couple, and the rest of them were single. And they, they, the people there, they let us stay, uh, even with the child. Mm. And, and of course, all the Danish students loved it with, yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. the, with the child. So. so then back to the U.S., right? And uh, uh, another little kind of like a postdoc stint back with us for mm -hmm. a bit. And then you had to get a job. Mm -hmm. a real job. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you choose Medical College of Wisconsin? Or was there anything special there that there was the only thing available, or what? Um, well, uh, you remember um, Jim Smith came mm -hmm. over and talked to you. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And yes. and he, I had talked to a guy by the name of Dick Stewart, right. who was starting this uh, department. I, I guess it has started of environmental medicine. Mm -hmm. And he had a big uh, grant from NIOSH um, to study the effect of different pollutants. Mm -hmm. and, and he was basically um, a, a pharmacologist, but he wanted a physiologist to mm -hmm. do some physiology testing. So that's why, that's why he wanted, um, uh, he talked to J.J. Smith uh, uh, to, you know, J.J., do you know anybody, do you know any physiologist? So then, he, I don't know if he came over for that. Yeah, but he did. Yeah, yeah. and um, and so um, then I, I went over and interviewed, and um, uh, with him spent one day, and um, uh, he offered me a job, um, and I, I, I accepted it. Um, but I don't know if you remember this, but I also got an offer from uh, Wayne Osnes, Kansas. At Kansas, yeah. Yes, I do know. Yeah, yeah. and then there was talk that there might be a position at um, uh, in the department of PE at Madison. Um, God, I didn't remember that. Yeah. Huh. Um, but um, uh, first of all, both of those positions, <laughs> the pay was about 6,000 less than the one in Milwaukee, um, that much uh, less. Plus the fact that uh, I felt that I needed to um, get away from, a, uh, from sure. Madison for a sure. while to try and develop my own identity, which of course turned out to be <laughs> because I continued to collaborate with well, you and with this card, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, and the other thing is, you know, Helen and I, um, uh, we were sympathetic, um, as were you, to all of the movements that were going on on campus mm -hmm. in the middle and late mm -hmm. 60s. Um, and, you know, we attended rallies and I went on some walks, uh, but I never engaged in disobedience. Um, uh, uh, um, and Helen and I had decided, in contrast to what these people were saying, that we need to 
overthrow throw the, uh, <laughs> these people out and take over the government. Our, our intent was that we would work the other way. We would work from the bottom up. Uh -huh. We would move into a community and become involved and that way try and influence mm -hmm. you know, the direction that our society was going. And so that was a, a major reason mm -hmm. why we moved uh, huh. also. Interesting. It turns out that, um, that uh, very quickly we found out that uh, uh, Dick Stewart and the other people, they were really uh, a businessman. They, they were not academic at all. Mm. And so uh, that, that really disappointed me. But of course I had started. Um, and so then what I did is I, I, as much as I could, got involved in the physiology department. Uh, with Jim Smith, with John mm -hmm. Campine, with Lyle Hamilton, you know, great people. And, and then three years later, when uh, uh, Stewart lost his grant and the department folded it while it was automatic, mm -hmm. I, I, Jim Smith, uh, right away took mm -hmm. me into uh, the department. And, and John Campine um, uh, got me into the VA system, so I got VA support. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it Interesting how I, why I first went there and why um, you know I stayed there, mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, you know and I had I loved Madison, I loved Madison, um, and we thought we would eventually go back to Madison, but um, we moved into the community and we did exactly what we uh, said we were going to do. You know I I got onto the school board, right. was on the school board for 17 years. Um, Helen uh, got onto the hospital board. I coached soccer. Uh, we both taught religion. You know, we really became involved in the community, and I think that um, it it did what uh, we intended. I think we had a, a positive impact, and we still do in in the community. So now you've studied a, a variety of things in your research over the last forty years. Um, give us a few highlights, two or three of what. What excited you the most? What you felt your your most important contributions were? Can you give us a sketch of that? Yeah. Well, you know, I guess there are two parts of that. Mm -hmm. One one is of the research itself, mm -hmm. um, which was the most exciting. Um, and you know, I think that um, the the work that you and I did um, on uh, climatization at high altitude mm -hmm. um, and how uh, we um, uh, had to do uh, several studies, um, and I think that we um, eventually, um, uh, the research um, had a major impact on views uh, about acclimatization mm -hmm. to altitude. Um, and so that's one part of it. I, I think that um, the studies that I did on the hypertrophy of exercise uh, was uh, another part. I think that. Um, you know, what I've done, um, you know, eventually got to the point that I, I realized that we're going to have to get into the, the neurosciences and, uh, and then um, uh, getting into that, um, you know, from uh, doing the cooling of the ventral lateral surfaces and then doing microinjections and microdialysis and, and chronic lesioning. I mean, I think I think that all of this, all of those have, have made a contribution. Um, but you know, the other part of it, and I think the part that I feel um, probably is more important, not probably is more important, but is most important, is um, like you, the impact that I've had on people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I've directed the, the graduate program in physiology um, at the medical college since 1978. So there's well over 100 students that have come through, about 20 that I have been the primary mentor. Um, and, and virtually all of them have gone on to be highly successful, um, you know, in where they decided to go. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that um, um, the same impact that you had on me and, and, and the way I related to, the I relate to students and to people just like you, um, you know, I, I think the example you set, that it then has an effect 
on them. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that is my most important contribution mm -hmm. uh, to physiology. And you're still doing it. And I'm still doing That's it, yeah. That's the thing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What um, uh, kind of advice do you think? What's the future of our kinds of science and where it's going and young people? What kind of advice would you give to young people? The, the, in, in giving talks to high school students, um, undergraduate students, uh, uh, prospective medical students, um, the advice that I always give is that um, um, they should try and explore to find out what really interests them. And, and if they find it, then to develop their capability in that area. Um, <clears throat> and it isn't so important, you know, what they actually study as, you know, in high school and in um, college. Uh, but the important thing is to continually challenge themselves, mm -hmm. to keep their learning curve steep, to appreciate the, the value of, of learning and getting to the point where you enjoy mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, 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 um, if I had to describe what my passion in life is, I, I you know, mm -hmm. I'd have to say it's learning. I mean, I, I really enjoy learning, and it's not only in science, it's in everything, mm -hmm. you know? When, when we just got back from Morocco, well, I mean, there wasn't any science there. I did spend one day at a medical school, <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's just the culture yeah. and, and um, that I enjoyed learning mm -hmm. about. And, and, you know, when Helen and I uh, uh, travel in Europe, you know, I spend a day going through a cathedral with her, mm -hmm. learning about the art. The art. Um, you know, so my, my, I continually advise students to find out what to explore, find out what interests them, then develop your capabilities in that area, and you do that by keeping your learning curve uh, mm -hmm. steep. steep. And, and uh, in the end, there will be an opportunity for you, and you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So that would, that would be my advice. Bert, thanks so much for sharing your life and your career with us. And uh, I know you're still keeping on, and we wish you all the best with that. Thanks, Thank man. you, Jerry. It's been Thank a real you. pleasure. It's